In this tutorial, we'll just take another quick look at the fluid simulator. And in this case, I'm taking the inflow object that we looked at before, and I'm running it into this hemisphere right here. And let's see what it looks like. It's a, it's a real rough rendering of it, just so it won't take too long, and that's why it's collapsing through the sides. But basically, it collides with the hemisphere, and then it goes into the boundary, that cube boundary that's required for calculating it. So you can actually do some other cool effects, but to set that up, you need to put the, your hemisphere in the scene, and then over here in the fluid, make sure it's the, an obstacle type, if you haven't obviously figured that out, which you likely have. So, But the one thing that might not be obvious to you is that, well, once, once I have baked the scene, in the, in the old days, on the old early versions of Blender, one, let me see, where is this thing? Uh, so you see that shows my inflow object it is. If I right click it again, that shows as my domain object because that's because I baked it already. And you actually don't see the cube. Even if I go into wireframe mode, I don't see the cube anymore like that. Well, it's because in, there should be a free bake button in here somewhere, which I can't find right now. And you free the bake, but otherwise you can just click between the two to get your... Uh, to get to the domain and then you can rebake it again at a higher resolution. I have it really low, 35 right here for that. And, but the other thing is that when you make your domain object, let me see how to free this thing. You know, when you make your domain object, you don't want to make it huge in the scene. Like you don't want to make a gigantic cube and then start putting all these little pieces inside of it. What you're better off doing is making a small cube and then scaling all these pieces down to really small sizes. That way the total simulation doesn't take near as long. So you have to kind of scale everything uh, to a smaller size. And that's, it's, that's a little problematic if you're trying to match to other objects in your scene, like a car that's, you know, a couple meters tall or something like that. But that's, uh, yeah, that's really what you need to do for this kind of simulation otherwise you'll spend forever waiting for the simulations to run but then you can you know make this flow into another object control the direction and things like that for the fluid and um, okay well that's it for this lesson and I'll see you in the next lesson